fellow believers, greetings in Christ's holy name. I have an opportunity to start a little bit early this morning, and I'm certainly going to take advantage of it, because uh, I know that majority of our followers, followers are overseas, international, in Kenya and Uganda and those countries, and it's already evening over there, and they've had a long day, and they may want to have things to do this afternoon or tonight, and wish to go ahead and turn in. So I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of this and start early. Uh, I'm Evangelist Bill King, as you may know, senior pastor here at Bill King Ministries. And I do so thank you for joining us this Sunday morning and sharing God's word. And it's my humble prayer that this message finds you in good health and spirit and that it enlightens you even more in your knowledge and understanding of God's word. And may he use it for his glory. Amen. The title of my message this morning is The Second Death. And be forewarned, this is a long message. It has a lot of, of invaluable information, spiritual information in it, and I can't shorten it a bit. So bear, uh, bear with me. <laughs> Before we get started, I'd like to send a big shout out to uh, our associate pastors, Brother Moses Drake Laswata in Kampala, Uganda, Brother David Ranga, Kakamega County, Western Kenya, Brother Henry Ochino in Kisimu, Kenya, Brother Nishan Ofiongo, also in Kisimu, and Brother George Mogaka Manyanya in Kisi, Kenya, and also to our newest associate pastor, David Shimiu, and um, he's in Bung Bungoma uh, City, Kenya. Uh, I thank you, my brothers, for working with me and supporting our ministry and for all the hard work you do in your communities, serving our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. And may God keep each of you close to his bosom and bless you in unimaginable ways. Amen. Also, to my brother in Christ, Pastor Philip Kiryu in Uplands, Kenya, who has lost his only brother and several church members due to the recent flooding, our prayers are with you and your family and your church and your community. May God be with you in yours during this trial. Amen. And additionally, a lifelong friend of mine whom I've previously mentioned, Mr. Joseph Phillips from back in my hometown of Niceville, Florida, is in quite a serious health crisis presently, having already suffered several strokes as well as being a kidney dialysis patient, only to have suffered yet another stroke. And he's currently hospitaled in Pensacola, Florida, awaiting the assignment of a permanent room in a medical facility for treatment and rehabilitation. Please keep my friend Joe in your thoughts and prayers as he's struggling through his illnesses. And may God watch over him and heal him completely and swiftly. Amen. Thank you. And my message this morning, as I said, it's going to be a long one, focuses on the second death. And for those of you who have no idea what it is I'm referring to, well, bear with me, and you soon you shall. And my references this morning are 1 Corinthians 15.44, 1 Corinthians 15.46, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, Revelation 2, 11, Revelation 20, 6, Revelation 20, 14, Revelation 21, 8, Matthew 24, 15 through 29, back to 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52, back to Revelation 20, 10, Revelation 20, 15, on to Matthew 7, 21 through 23, and Revelation 20, 11, 13, as contained in the New King James Version of the Holy Bible and listed in order of precedence in their use in this message, if you have your Bibles with you and you wish to follow along at the appropriate times. Bless you. Let's get on with our message this morning. And excuse me before we get started, let me wet my whistle. We all should understand, or at least we should, the concept of life and death, that it's a naturally occurring physical process from the cradle to the grave for our earthly bodies. And I specifically stated earthly bodies as yes, 
we have an earthly body and a spiritual body. For as Apostle Paul teaches in 1 Corinthians, and I quote 1 Corinthians 15, 44, 1 Corinthians 15, 44. Give you a second to get there. <clears throat> Pray y'all are having a great Sunday wherever you are in the world. I am. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 15, 44, quote, It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body, end quote. And also, Paul, 1 Corinthians 15, 46, 1 Corinthians 15, 46, carrying on with that, quote, However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural and afterward, the spiritual, end quote. <clears throat> now, those who are not of the faith primarily adhere to the concept that once our earthly body has expired, the grave is our final destination. There's no afterlife, no spirit, soul, and most certainly there will not be a resurrection of the body from the grave upon the second coming of our Lord. For such defies nature and science. However, science can neither prove nor disprove the supernatural spiritual aspect of our faith. And God is the creator of all things in the natural world. So for anyone, whether an atheist, a believer in or follower of an opposing religion, or even a Christian who doesn't believe in the resurrection of the body, and yes, there are those who do not. They say they're Christians, but they do not believe in the resurrection of the body, as did the Sadducees. Christ's op opposition who brought about his crucifixion and death. Well, those people are extremely foolish, illustrating that they do not fully comprehend all that God provides in his word. And excuse me for the background noise. I'm babysitting uh, my son's puppy. And he's in a crate and he's really over there getting down. I, I'm sorry about that. If of the faith, we know the grave, we know that the grave is not our final de destination. No, the grave is not our final destination. <clears throat> As it wasn't for our Lord. Merely a resting place for our deceased earthly bodies. Until such time as we are resurrected from the grave, gifted with our new bodies, and rise to meet our Lord as he descends from above during the second coming. Now that's just basic Christianity 101. As once again, we turn to Apostle Paul, and this time we're going to 1 Thessalonians 4, <clears throat> 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Go ahead and turn over there if you will. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. I'm looking out the window at an absolutely beautiful, beautiful Georgia morning sky. Praise God for that gift. I'm quoting 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. He means have passed away. They are dead, deceased. Falling asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. That means Christians, believers who have passed away. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, the second coming, will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. And therefore, comfort one another with these words. And that was 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, Apostle Paul. And like I said, when he said, have fallen asleep, 
Well, that just refers to having passed away or are now deceased. But there's an important factor, which is the subject of my message. There's an important factor of the afterlife few even consider. Or if they do, they don't give it much thought as surely it won't apply to them. The second death. That's the title of this message. The second death. Second death? What in heaven's name is the second death? <laughs> the term second death is used only four times in Holy Scripture, all in the book of Revelation. For the Holy Bible says, and I'm going to quote Revelation 2.11, Revelation 2.11, if you got your Bible, flip all the way to the back to the second chapter. Jump on board with me. Quote Revelation 2.11, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Also, going on to Revelation 26, 26, I quote, Blessed, and everyone should know, Revelation was penned by the Apostle John, the, the, the disciple that Jesus loved. I thought I'd throw that in there in case you didn't know. Quote, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Talking about Jesus's. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. End quote. On to Revelation 20, 14. I'm hurrying up a little bit because this is a long one. Revelation 20, 14. I quote. Then death and Hades, hell, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And one more quote. Revelation 21, 8. Revelation 21, 8. I quote, But the cowardly, unbelieving, abdominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, end quote. Did you catch all that? <laughs> I went pretty fast. If you didn't catch it, don't worry about it. I'm fixing to break it down for you right now. This is what we're talking about. Quote, he who overcomes, he who overcomes, that's Revelation 2.11. What is John speaking about? Hmm? Overcome what? We Christians overcome either by maintaining and growing in our faith, resisting the temptations of Satan to the point of our demise, our passing, or by maintaining and growing in our faith and remaining alive to partake in the rapture, wherein it is believed that we shall physically be taken away in the twinkling of an eye to be with our Lord, presumably by some, prior to the onset of the seven-year tribulation in the end times, as spoken of by Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 15 through 29. Now, a note on this. The term rapture, which I'm sure you've all heard of, rapture, it isn't found in Holy Scripture. <laughs> It is a conservative Christian doctrine based on John's teachings, or Paul's teachings, I'm sorry. I.e., we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And also, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will, dead will be raised incorruptible. How can they be raised incorruptible? Because the, the, spirit, the, the spiritual body is going to arise and we're going to be given a new uncorrupt body, sinless. And we shall be changed. And that was Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52. 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52. As for being raptured prior to the onset of the tribulation, 
which is the seven-year period during the end, end of days wherein Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet will be running rampant upon the world? It is the hope and prayer of all Christians that such shall and will occur, preventing those of us who are alive at that time from enduring the full seven-year tribulation. Now, I won't go into the tribulation any deeper in this message as it is the subject matter of an entire sermon in its own right. I apologize. You hear the little puppy squeaking a toy back there. They have, I have to keep her occupied. Moving right along. Quote, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first res resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power. That was Revelation 26. Now, who and what was John speaking of when he refers to he and the first resurrection? Jesus Christ was and is the only man to have been resurrected in biblical history. The focal point of the first resurrection upon his death on the cross of Calvary. Three days after having been removed from the cross and placed in the borrowed tomb. Quote, blessed and holy is he, and she's included, females included, that just means humanity, refers to those of us of the faith, believers in God the Father, the Son, Christ Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. For if we are of the faith, listen to me carefully, for if we truly are of the faith, Satan has no power or control over us. Our salvation is assured through our faith, having been washed in the shed blood of the Lamb. What's the shed blood of the Lamb? Who's the blood? Who's the Lamb? Christ Jesus. Moving right along. And quote, Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. In this verse, death takes on a physical presence becomes an actual entity versus a naturally occurring process, spoken of in such a manner as to say there shall be no more physical death on earth. But there may well be a second death for some, as we'll soon see. Hades, as I said, is another term for hell or the lake of fire, the great abyss, Satan's realm. So, this portion of the verse can be a bit confusing as hell is cast into the lake of fire, which in essence is saying that hell is cast into itself. Now this verse can more easily be understood if one view it, views it as finality, finality, as the angel of the Lord speaking with Apostle John, who I said is the author, author of the book of Revelation, is saying that hell will no longer be a punishment or place in which any faithful believer will ever have to consider again. No, only if their names aren't written in the book of life, which we'll discuss in a moment. Please excuse me. I have to take care of something. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Sorry, I'm very, I apologize for that. Let's continue. <clears throat> Quote, this is the second death. That was in Revelation 2014 that I read previously. This is the second death, Revelation 2014. And, quote, shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And that was Revelation 21.8. Thus, the second death is the destination of not only death and Hades, but also, quote, the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, as well as Satan, the beast, and the false prophet, as found in Revelation 20.10, and including those who shall stand before, and including 
all of those who shall stand before the great white throne of judgment, that's everybody, whereupon Christ Jesus shall be seated in all his glory, and the pages of the books open, and those whose names are not found in the book of life will at that time experience the second death. For the Holy Bible says, and I'm going to quote Revelation 20, 15, Revelation 20, 15. So if I've got anybody out there listening and viewing to me right now who's not a faithful believer in Christ Jesus, hasn't yet to turn their, their heart and soul over to our Lord and Savior, this is what may happen to you if you pass away and you haven't done so. Listen very carefully. Revelation 20, 15, quote, And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, the second death. Further, Holy Scripture expounds on the great day of judgment, substantiation of what I've preached. For the Holy Bible says, and I'm quoting Revelation 20, 11 through 13. This is Revelation 20, 11 through 13. Quote, Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Small and great, that means everybody. Standing before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. The book of life. That's where you want your name written, in the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works. Now, Holy Scripture says, works don't matter. Uh, did you hear, hear what I just quoted? All and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Yes, we have salvation through faith and faith alone and works don't matter until you get to heaven and you stand before Jesus in the great white throne day of judgment and it said it right there and the dead were judged according to to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. There it is again. End quote, Revelation 20, 11 through 13. So don't sit around and foolishly think that just because you are, you have given your heart and soul to Jesus Christ, and you're a faithful believer, and you're proclaiming yourself to be a faithful believer, but that's all you got to do. Just sit around and mind your own little business and not help anybody. Works. Fruitful works. Get on them if you're not. It's very important. But what am I saying? What am I saying at the onset of this message? What, what about what? There's an, when I said there's an important factor of the afterlife few even consider, or if they do, they don't give it much thought, as surely it won't apply to them. The important factor I'm referring to is the second death. But why do I say that few believers even consider it or don't give it much thought? as surely it won't apply to them. Here's the answer. And this is the point of my message. I'm speaking to these people and I'm fixing to describe them for you. There are many people who proclaim they are Christian, go through the motions of practicing Christianity, all aspects of our religion, and yet, their minds and hearts are corrupt. Though originally forgiven of their sins, they've continued to sin and their hearts are icy cold on the inside towards their fellow man, especially those who are in need. These so-called Christians go to church each Sunday morning Listen to me carefully. I'm laying it down. I'm not mincing my words. These so-called Christians go to church each Sunday morning 
wearing a big smile, shaking hands, greeting fellow church members and shouting amen and hallelujah to their pastor's sermon. And then the moment they are out of God's house, their evil sinful nature is back on full display and in control. For these so-called Christians, the second death awaits on the day of judgment should they not repent and be forgiven beforehand. For as Christ Jesus himself teaches us, and we're going to the gospel of Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23. This is the gospel of Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23. And this is our Lord speaking right here. Pay heed. Note, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. The point of this message? Simply professing or proclaiming oneself as a Christian, attending religious services and other Christian-related activities, listen, does not guarantee one will indeed be rewarded with eternal life. Many people are mistaken on that. But I'm just teaching this morning why that's not true. Why you can't just expect to be rewarded with eternal life just because you have repented, been forgiven, and you say you're a Christian. Now I'm going to repeat it. Simply professing and proclaiming oneself as a Christian, attending religious services, and other Christian-related activities does not guarantee one will in indeed be rewarded with eternal life. And I could name some names right now of some people watching this right here that I've dealt with for the last couple of months and for a couple of years who fall into that category and they're so foolish they don't realize it. Though initially forgiven of sin upon repentance, forgiveness, and acceptance of Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, one must actually, and this is a term that we use here in the United States, it's an old term, you may not be familiar with it, but you're going to understand it when I say it. One must actually walk the walk and talk the talk continually thereafter in order to assure such a glorious reward awaits. You understand that? Don't just say it. Don't just say you're a Christian. That's, that's, that's talking the talk. But put it into, put it into motion. Put it into effect. That's walking the walk. So you want to walk the walk and you want to talk the talk continually thereafter in order to assure such a glorious reward awaits. If not, and here it is, if not, you can guarantee if you're not doing what I, if you're not, if you're not adhering to all of God's commandments and the teachings of the Son Christ Jesus and living your life according to the will of God the Father, this is what will happen. They can guarantee that when they stand before our Lord on the great day of judgment, He shall tell them, just as He did in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. You see, my brothers and sisters, the second death awaits those people. Please listen to me. Don't find yourself burning 
for all eternity. Amen. Now, I sped through that pretty fast. I know I went pretty fast, but I always post the whole written message when I post on Facebook so you can you can catch up with me. Plus, this video is going to be on Facebook forever. And as I said before, I file all of my video sermons and Bible studies and music and everything on my YouTube channel page. And you can go out there. You can look at them all you want. You can view them. You can print them. You can download them. You can share them. You can do whatever you want. I don't preach for profit. Okay? It's God's word. It's free. It's not mine. <laughs> As we draw near the conclusion of our service this morning, if there's anyone with us now, or viewing this message at a later date and time, who has yet to turn their life over to God. And now is the time. If you so desire to do so, of your own free will, highly important, God grants all of us free will. Then it would be my honor and privilege to lead you to the cross. So please bow your heads and repeat this sinner's prayer with me. Father God in heaven, I come to you a sinner seeking forgiveness and salvation, openly proclaiming you as almighty God and Christ Jesus as the sole means of redemption through faith in his divine power and authority as per your grace. Forgive me my indiscretions and accept me into your heavenly kingdom upon my earthly demise. And in this I pray, in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. If you said this prayer with me in earnest repentance, then Christ Jesus has forgiven you of all your sins, and he's drawn you in as a child of his Father. I welcome you to our family. Now go forth and seek a local minister or priest, minister or priest, minister for Protestants, priest for Catholics. This is a non-denominational ministry, so we cover all bases. Go forth now and seek a local minister or priest for the purpose of water baptism in accordance with Jesus' instructions and endeavor to embrace the teachings of this message right here. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And now, in conclusion, and I hate to let y'all go, I do so look forward to sharing God's word with each and every one of you each Sunday morning. I assure you, it is the highlight of my nearly 64 years on this planet. I thank you. In conclusion, if you enjoyed this message and you agree with my teachings, I welcome you to join me and your fellow Christian brothers and sisters each Sunday morning at 10.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time, that's the same time zone as New York City. I live in the United States on the East Coast, but I'm in the South. New York's in the north. Eastern Standard Time for live online worship service right here on our ministry page. Not mine. It's our ministry page. Bill King Ministries on Facebook.com. And please, if you would, bring along some family and friends with you so we can all share in God's word and fellowship and camaraderie in the, in, in the being the body of Christ. God's church. Thank you. And now, please join me in our closing prayer. And as always, go in peace, my brothers and sisters. Go in peace. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, oh, the shocked look which will be upon the faces of those who discover upon the great day of judgment they did not fulfill their faithful obligation unto you during their earthly existence as required. And your son, Christ Jesus, 
turns them away. For the searing flames of the lake of fire, the second death, await them. Give us strength, O Lord, to always walk in your light, regardless of what those around us do, to always be faithful and obedient servants unto you in every aspect of our lives, so that we may never feel those searing flames from the lake of fire. And for this we pray unto you, in the holy and powerful name of Christ Jesus, your only begotten Son, the living Son of God. And all God's children said, Amen. Thank you. I do so appreciate your time. And I do look forward to joining you, you joining with me, and me joining with you next Sunday. Bye-bye.